Good Monday morning! I am MPJ and you are watching Fun Fun Function. So today we're going to do a Q&A episode. Uh, we're going, I asked people to uh, send me questions on, on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter account is, is somewhere here. MPJ me. So people sent me some questions and uh, I'm going to answer them. Alright, here's one by Juan Martinez. Uh, what do you think about the all in JS trend? CSS and HTML in JavaScript. Haha! <laughs> okay, uh, we are... We are not going to make a Q&A episode anymore. This is, I feel this, this is going to be a separations of concerns rant. For the people that might not be familiar with this, uh, there was um, a few years ago Facebook uh, released React and uh, what they started doing with React that was very controversial at the time and put a lot of people off from React was that they mixed HTML and JavaScript in the same file. And saying that it's okay to mix HTML and, and, and uh, JavaScript in the same file, that was at that time sort of like saying that the earth was round. Back in the time when people believed it was flat, people was, what the hell is this? You're crazy. And I shall say that I was one of those people. I was very skeptical about React when I first saw it. I, I really, really, really hated it because it offended my religion of separating uh, HTML, CSS and JavaScript into these buckets. That was how you did things. But after listening to the, their uh, motivations for a while, I started to come around. Let's think a bit about the reason why we started as an industry to started to separate HTML and, and CSS and, and JavaScript into, into separate files from the first place. In programming there is this concept uh, that is called divide and conquer. Uh, it's also often referred to also as uh, separation of concerns. And it comes from the fact that as a human, uh, because programmers are human, uh, there is a limited amount of cognitive space in your brain. Like some people can only think about one thing at a time and maybe some people can think about two and maybe some people can even hold three or four or five things at, in their head at a time. But there is no human being that can hold uh, 10 or 30 or 40 or 100 things in your mind at the same time. So we need to uh, we need to be able to separate our programs so that we can think about one single part at a time. So it's a well-established technique among programmers. It's one of the first things that you, you learn uh, when it comes to structuring your software, that when you're faced with a big problem, a big hairy problem, you, uh, well, you, 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 it's like eating an elephant. You start by shipping away at it one bit at a time. You basically find a way to break that big problem into many, many, many tiny problems and you create a structure so that you can think about one of those problems uh, uh, like separately. Like divide and conquer is also often uh, talked about as separation of concerns. We have this big problem, this big concern, uh, which we separate into lots of little concerns uh, that uh, are not as scary so that we can uh, think about these separated concerns individually. Now, the tricky part is how? How do you separate these things? According to what criteria? What is the individual concerns? So most programmers know about separation of concerns and, and desire it and want to do it in their software, but uh, you you might be uh, you might not necessarily be able to do it. Uh, for instance, you might be a junior developer and uh, separation of concerns might be a new element to you. You know that you're supposed to do it, but uh, you're not experienced in doing it, so you you can't see uh, where how to break this big problem into multiple small ones because you, you don't exactly see 
the seams, so to speak. Uh, but it also might be that you're an experienced programmer uh, and you have done this many times before, but perhaps you're tired or perhaps like you just haven't thought about this problem uh, problem enough yet so that you you cannot see the, the, the trees in the forest yet. And when you're in this situation where you want to separate concerns but you are unable to see how to do it, it's very easy to fall into the trap of doing something that only feels like you're separating concerns. And in the case of the HTML, CSS, JavaScript debate, that is contained here uh, in, your, uh, in, your, in the view parts of your uh, application. Uh, the view is separated from your business logic, which might be stuff like, uh, if it's an e-commerce system, it would be like the ordering system that goes down in the database and, and puts orders at, as, as paid, uh, sends emails, or tells the payment system that uh, this should, should, we should process this payment that w on the credit card that we got from the from the view layer and inside the business logic there might be even smaller uh, for systems like for instance like a payment system here uh, that might uh, be able to be contained so that that does not know about all the stuff in the business logic we can so that it can process just payments that way we can think about just payments when we are working in that module. We don't need to keep this entire business layer in, in our heads. But the problem a lot of people had then in the view was that how do you like organize the view then? How do you break those parts apart? Well, like where are the seams in the view that is equivalent to things like the payment uh, system in, inside your business logic? As an industry, we were confused about this uh, for a long time. Uh, we, um, we didn't really know how to break the view apart so that we could, could think about smaller parts of it individually. And this frustrated us because it was too much to think about. So we just, oh, we just started separating it in some way. It was like we were in this... Uh, this, this mechanics workshop and there were parts all over the place and we didn't know how they worked or how they interacted and we needed to organize them somehow and in, 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 in our frustration we started to organizing them by color we, by how they looked uh, and we put the, uh, the, the red ones in the, in the, in the red uh, bucket and the green ones in the green bucket and the blue ones in the blue bucket and uh, it didn't really make anything easier to find because it was a nonsensical uh, ordering. It was just by how things looked, uh, but it felt better. It felt like we had organized things and we have created order. But in reality, we just had to jump around a lot more between, uh, uh, between the different colored buckets and searching around in them. And that's what we did with HTML and CSS and JavaScript. We put them in separate files and we decreed that this is the best way to organize things. Now things are ordered. But in reality we learned over time that this is not uh, a sensible way of organizing things. Now we need to remember that the main reason that we are doing code organization uh, in the first place is so that we can do separation of concerns. So that we can uh, reduce the load on our brains by allowing us to think about smaller subsets of our problem domain. Like smaller problems of our big, big problems. So that problems are contained in small units and not intermingled with, uh, with each other too much. So that we can think about them easier. And from that perspective, dividing things into HTML, CSS and, and JavaScript is like completely nonsensical. Let me show you. CSS and JS. JS. So this is our view, right? HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now let's say that we have a problem with our view and we need to start thinking about it. Now it might be that in, in some cases that uh, your problem is, is contained just in the, in the job, in the, in the CSS, right? 
It might be that uh, the problem is just here, it's some pixel that you need to move. However, uh, in my experience, and I think in most people's experience, problems or uh, they span these things. These kinds of problems that span HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, are much more common problems than this kind of problem. And that's why this organizing by file type or, or language type does not make sense because that will make you like have to jump between this, these things all the time. So let me draw another one. Like another concern might be like this or another concern might be like this. Now, if you agree with me that these, con these are our concerns and this spanning concern is more common than the concern that uh, just concerns one type of technology, then you need, if you agree with that, you also need to agree with me on the fact that this organization, this kind of separation, this is not separation by concern. This is just separation of, of, you know, like color or something. It's just completely arbitrary. It will not help you to think about these concerns individually. It will actually hinder you because you will have to uh, jump between these contexts all the time. If someone says to you that separating HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, that that, that is separation of concerns, then they are bullshitting you. They don't know what separation of concerns means. I think that the HTML, CSS, and, and JavaScript uh, separation religion that I was once a part of, remember, uh, is another um, brand of another uh, thing that is pretty widespread and that I think is very, very harmful advice. Well, very harmful, but it's, it's very dumb and unproductive. Uh, and that is, hang on, long functions are bad. This is very, 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 very bad advice. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of really bad code is written in these long as one execution uh, uh, functions that are impossible to detangle or understand anything about. But people confuse that the, that the fact that it's long, that that has anything to do with it. And I hear people giving advice like, you should not have a function that is longer than one page or some arbitrary line number. That is absolutely not important. That is just color. That is just how things look. That is just, uh, that is just organization uh, that feels like organization, but isn't really separation of concerns. Now, before you get out your pitchforks, I'm not against function extraction. Function extraction is fantastic. It's a very, very useful tool. But what I want you to realize here that there are two kinds of function extraction, the bad one and the good one. Let's say that we have, like, this is a big problem. This is a big concern. This is your big ass file that is dealing with some you know, data pipeline or whatever. This file is getting unwieldy and we need some way of breaking it into chunks so that it will make it easier for us to think about it. Now, good function extraction. It's noticing that we have uh, a problem that is, it's, it's, it's spread out here and here and here and here. Uh, and we realize that we can move this code into one block da -da -da, instead of having it spread out over the file so that we can think about this block uh, separately. We might also notice that, uh, that that is one thing, that that is not really extraction, but it's still separation of concerns, right? Even though we haven't moved anything uh, out, of, uh, out of the file into a function, we have just moved the code around so that it's it's in the right place. Uh, we might also notice that there is a, uh, a, a function over here uh, that is duplicated over here. And we also notice that it's a general concept, like uh, it might be some kind of string operation that is not really related to this problem domain. Like it might something be like 
reversing a string or uh, uppercasing a string uh, or capitalizing the first letter, for instance. And we, uh, we realize that, yeah, this can be moved to a completely different file. Uh, and we do. So we create a function and uh, over here in some separate file and we call it from the file. Because this is a small contained problem that is general, we can now move that out of the file uh, and it's also very descriptive, for instance, like capitalize, uh, seeing that call in the, in the, in the code, you, you get what that is by just looking at the call. You, you don't have to go into the file and, and figure stuff out in order to use capitalize in your, uh, in your big file. So, so that is good function extraction. We have actually separated a concern out so that we have one less thing to think about. But let's talk about a bad way to do function extraction. So we have a lot of code, we have some code here, we have some code here, we have some code here. And a uh, very easy thing to do is to start doing like, oh, this is so much code, let's just break it into chapters. Let's take this part here and give that a function name and put it in a function. And then we just have one line of code there and we take that and we uh, call that a function and we take this and call that a function so that we just have like a uh, part uh, one calling that part two uh, da, da, part three uh, da, 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 calling that but with real names for kind of what they do. First of all that is pretty wasteful. You could do this with just like having a comment on top of each block you don't have to like add a function to do this. You're just adding uh, more surface API area uh, for no good reason. Uh, but even if we discount that, you're also making your code uh, harder to reason about for the same reason that we did. Like it's hard to reason about in the HTML, CSS and, and JavaScript case because your problem domain, you have not separated by concern. You have separated by just yes, some visual artifact. You have not properly thought about uh, how if this uh, extraction will actually help me to think about smaller parts of the application. And when you do like this hand wavy kind of uh, function extraction, you end up in a situation where you realize that you go into this method, this function here, and you you, uh, you look at the code, and when you do, you realize that, hey, I need to go into this function to understand what is happening earlier in order to understand the, the context that this function operates on. And it's when you get that feeling, if that feeling hits you, that means that you have done a bad uh, extraction. And you should probably roll that back and inline it again until you can find the, the actual parts that are useful to break out, that are actual concerns that can be separated. Because in this case, you have the problem, let me draw with black pen instead, because that makes it so much clearer, uh, is that you have concerns that span like this, or maybe like this. You do have some problems that do span like only like that, but in the end, you're, you have to think about these things first. Like these are the things that you're trying to uh, think about separately. And if you just like do this weird, like arbitrary ways of breaking things out into functions that are not not truly problem related, you uh, you're gonna end up just jumping out in and out of functions all the time and jumping down stack traces and up stack traces in order to find a problem. That is my rant for today, a rant that I have had many times before and I will have again. Make sure that when you are 
organizing and separating your code into parts, make sure that you are separating it by your actual concerns and not just separating it. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. This is a programming show that I release every Monday morning 0800 GMT time. So what are your thoughts on this topic? Uh, please comment down below and I shall answer or somebody of your, your fellow viewers. Or maybe if you uh, maybe don't have something else to say, uh, please check out the comment field anyway and see if somebody there, like you could clarify something for someone. YouTube. Ah, tab this somewhere. Oh, you should subscribe. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.